Hey everybody, I'm back again with review number three, this time with Pookie, Mr. Hot Soup himself. Uh, this is going to be from a rank scrim he did uh, that ended with a tie score. Uh, as you can see, this one's a little bit longer than the others. Uh, there were a bunch of highlights that I thought warranted inclusion, uh, and I decided to kind of leave it as is instead of cutting the length down arbitrarily. So there are timestamps at the bottom, just like with the other reviews. So. Feel free to skip around or watch it however you like. Hopefully you find something useful. Um, that's always the goal. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we'll look for the third time it happens and then we'll I'll comment on the pattern. Oh, bye. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> what did you shoot at to lose your invincibility? Oh, you actually saw him. You respond to Adam. And I over aim and I think it was slightly just panic. Um, yeah. Like like yeah. the reaction of there's a person in front of me. But you do spawn with invincibility. So you have like How long does that last? Nowadays, I think it's like two seconds that they set it at. Like it's longer than you think. And that's just like if I don't do anything, like I can move, right? Mm hmm Yeah. As long as you don't fire or debt or throw a nade or anything, I'm pretty sure okay. you got it. So you can God, give God. yourself more time to like steady yourself. React. Yeah, yeah. So, are you a sports fan? Do you like any like basketball or anything? Yeah, I like football. Okay. Every every player on the team has a role. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, basketball is my favorite sport, so it's usually my my go to analogy. Gotcha. Um, but the point is that there's there's always going to be role players. Right, and yeah. role players can develop into star players like Jimmy Butler or someone like that. But um, the important part is knowing not your place, but like what you can contribute at any given time. And so yeah, kind of like your job. If you can think yeah, about it from like your opponent's point of view, it's not that if if they don't see the name over your character, they have to respect you as if you're anyone. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. until they, you know, until you, at, they're like literally in front of you and can see who it is, you're just an opponent that's doing shit that they don't want you to do. So if you go to like a far CP and start capping it, they have to respect it. Mm -hmm. um, if you are uh, uh, Sev or, or Slender, whoever else is really good they're going to be less inclined to want to go to like a far removed CP and remove themselves from other spots on the map. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you can take those types of things to your advantage. And if someone like that does come and get you, it's like, okay, you, you might lose the fight. But Took away time. somebody's time. Exactly. It's a resource. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm watching a fight and this distracts me for a split <laughs> second, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you to turn it off forever. Forbid me from using it. Yeah, basically. Ah, uh, yes, the teleporting. I remember this game. Uh, right away I can tell that you, even though he's not looking at you. Um. Oops. Let's go back. Ten seconds. Then. You're here. Your mm -hmm. safety is right here. This pillar thing. So if a guy peeks here, or from here, or here, or over here, they all get a free shot on you, no matter what. Um, yeah. And if you're strafing in and out of this little pillar, you can still be doing the exact same thing. You just have safety with train. Using sense? cover more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotcha. Most Eisley, it's like y you... You want to be in the middle because you know we're we're polite and we want to like hang out in the middle of the road, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't want to touch the sides, but re what people really should be doing is hugging the sides of the streets. Okay. Yeah. Just sprinting up the middle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right now. Right in the middle. <laughs> in your defense, uh, you had like four people die. 
And I didn't see him. No. Well, I just didn't expect him to spawn back. And I didn't check it, so. The second that they don't spawn the one you're staring at with your minimap, it means they're at the other one, though. You know what I mean? I think I was focused on the guy in front of me. But yeah, the, I mean, there wasn't four in front of me, so I should have looked behind me. Mm -hmm. So they're about to spawn. You turn your minimap, you turn your V here. You even open your big minimap to see. And this way is seeing this way, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Play. And you see, was that one or two? I think just one. At most, it wasn't four. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and so, therefore, there. I rushed you. into the one v one before. You know, I went in for the mm -hmm. fight before I checked around me. Yep. This spot on the the pillar isn't entirely safe because mm -hmm. you have this window you can shoot through, but it's a small thing. Great. <laughs> we gotta we gotta build Even if up. it's on X. <laughs> Break down to build up. Oh, you're so dead. <laughs> Run. Nice. Okay, good. He comes behind me and kills me, I think. Yeah, you're still dead. Um, I should have probably maybe backed up the corners there. Do you think I would have made it? We'll, we'll play it again. We'll watch it, and okay. then you'll tell me what you think you can do. Okay? All right. See on my mini-map, there's two in front of me, three in front of me, basically. And then, yeah, probably just not be there in the first spot, in the first place, um, and maybe hug the right side, I guess, would have made more sense. I would say that I would agree with almost all of that. So, in terms of, look at that slow-mo, and your mind at this, at this moment is, you see one person on your mini-map. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know that you have a teammate over here that you just saw. So everything up to this point is totally fine. And you even use this, right? See the NG? And then you saw the sniper, like right here. Yeah. And so now you're, and you see him here. Now you're in a two versus one. And now you got to go this way. Like, mm -hmm. like immediately. <laughs> So um, I'd probably fight him for too long or let him get too much damage on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though the um, the sniper didn't even shoot at you, there's no reason he couldn't have. Yeah. You know what I mean? And in terms of... Uh, if you think about each class having like its own range of influence that it's stronger in, and at this distance, NGs has an advantage on you as a sniper. Mm -hmm. um, he would need to be this little guy would need to be like here for me to be able to say like you have a distinct advantage on him you know what I mean yeah yeah and so you actually don't die because of the sniper you die because of the guy behind you mm -hmm. um, and that's just kind of like darn <laughs> you, you, I, yeah I was paying attention to spawn if you want to like the second you see the sniper it's hard to like get the order of operations, right? You come around the corner to get this guy, then you see this guy, then you rotate back, and as you're rotating back, you look at the spawn timer while you're like mid roll. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like a lot of one, two, three, but eventually it'll become uh, more second nature. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you played this really well against him. And then there's an engineer that pops up there. Mm -hmm. And you're moving towards him. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so you, you did it with the, the sniper where you stayed equidistance apart, right? Where you didn't move forward or backwards. And you actually like mm -hmm. were strafing towards your cover. So you played that really well. In this case, you were like... You ever you ever drive on the freeway and like you're driving like 65 because you're you're you, you follow the rules you know law abiding citizen yeah, right of course yeah, yeah, yeah and then like the dude's passing you on the left going like 70 mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you realize that he hasn't passed you and that you're like going 75 
<laughs> you know what I mean? That's yeah, kind of what yeah. that looked like, where you were like l walking with your engineer buddy right here. And I so just like, saw him going, so I was like, I got to go too. Got to keep up with traffic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not necessary. Gotcha. It goes back to the same thing where, you know, if your area of influence is, you know, X far, however far it is, your goal is to maintain that distance. Mm -hmm. And all you did there was make it more likely for the engineer to kill you. Yeah. He didn't. Just great. Has anyone told you not to roll so much? Mm, yes. Why did they tell you that? Just, I just forget it because it's easy to track and kill. I don't think that's the main reason why rolling is quote unquote bad. Mm -hmm. I actually don't agree that rolling is bad. And I'm not telling you not to roll so much. You didn't roll in this clip. The point of that question is to say that what happens when you roll is you can't act. Yeah. That's the biggest problem with rolling is you put your, you basically are stunning yourself <laughs> mm -hmm. until the animation finishes, right? And the same thing can happen with a jump. You jump and you're locked into the animation until it ends. Excuse me. And so what happens here, and this is what I was looking for an example of before, is we jump and we're out of combat or we're out of you're in the open yeah technically before you have had time to situate yourself mm -hmm. if you think of it from your opponent's perspective he's looking in this direction now he's obviously not but as many maps as he is if you jump and land here to give yourself enough time to corner peek in third person it will mean virtually nothing the difference between here and here in terms of how they're interpreting that on the minimap is negligible is same? yeah yeah it's basically identical and so you jump to here or roll to here rather than to here because at least you give yourself a split second to be like to survey the situation yeah yeah so just jumping the line basically right because he could have been looking right at me and just bonked me as soon as i came around because look, look at where your 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 cursor's here right you have to you have you've just jumped swiveled your mouse to face in this direction you then have to move your cursor over to this guy who will then be moving and so it's already going to be off Basically, by the amount of things that I have drawn on this screen <laughs> should indicate that you've had to do too much in too small a space of time. Yeah, yeah. And all of that gets rectified by going to here. You've, got, get, you've, you've bought yourself, you know, half a second to survey it mm -hmm. and then make your decision. Because I think your biggest problem in a lot of these fights has been going in with uh, a lack of information or a lack of preparedness you know what I mean it's not so much that your aiming is bad it's that you're like willingly putting yourself in positions where uh, you weren't ready for anything that can happen yeah you know what I mean sure. and so we'll play the rest of it in this case it worked fine because he was he wasn't looking at me uh -uh. so you get him okay You're actually doing a good job of strafing out in between his shots. So then you see this guy and you should just be done even bother. Bolt. Yeah. Because you just spent like five or six shots on doves, you're gonna have to reload soon. As a start. Yeah. Um, you're within the engineer's range that he wants to be in. This distance is NG Heaven. Mm-hmm. Technically, this is NG Heaven, because then he can debt you too, but close enough. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. This is good enough to be NG Heaven. heaven. <laughs> yeah. um, this would be a good time to either, you know, you can either roll this way to get close enough to that wall, or you can do a direct roll behind you to get behind yeah. this wall. Either one is fine. Going directly backwards is technically better, because you're not opening yourself up to anyone that's over here. Mm -hmm. Um, but that might—I don't know how good you are, like rolling in any any direction. 
you have to kind of like good question actually crimp your mouse and stuff it, it takes a tiny bit of practice but it's doable within like 10 minutes um but yeah just get the fuck out of dodge <laughs> at that point mm -hmm. it's not like you're running from the fight it's that you're resetting the fight yeah yeah taking a better angle basically mm -hmm. Less jumping around corners. <laughs> you can jump around like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But just uh be mindful of where you're landing, basically. Yeah. Like there. Like that. Jeez, man. <laughs> Remember those couple things I was like, I'll wait until I have a good point to talk about. <laughs> it was because you're doing the same thing both times. Yeah. And here it goes. <laughs> Gosh. And like this is things like because like, I did bot reviews in Overwatch and stuff, I know that there's things where if I watch my own gameplay, I wouldn't pick up on. And this is one of them. Okay. I'm glad it's helpful. Because <laughs> I would have just been like, oh, sick. It feels like, good I to jump over a wall. You got the parkour. You, you feel like Michael Scott. Parkour! <laughs> <laughs> but it's not good. It's not helpful for yourself. Uh -uh. Uh, there's your boy. He dropped you to half with his first shot, right? He does the same damage I do to him. <laughs> Let's watch, oh. the, uh, watch a little bit slower. So you tank the shot. Easy. You're using this terrain correctly. He is out of your line completely now, right? Mm -hmm. At this second, you have two options. You technically have more than two but you have two good options your first good option is depending on how good you are trusting your aim at that current moment you can see he hasn't moved he hasn't he hasn't rotated this way yet which means he's just like right here and so from this shooting angle you can't see him but rolling here you get one shot off mm -hmm. and so you can roll here shoot and then you're behind this thing and you can just crouch behind it and you've effectively gotten one more free shot off. Yeah. Okay. He will then rotate this way, heal up to full, and then start engaging you again. So that's one option. Option two is to go into this room and start healing. Mm -hmm. um, and option three is to just kind of chill. Yeah. At, at low health. And so you pick option three. <laughs> <laughs> Just like waiting for him to come back. You haven't reloaded your gun, so you have like three shots. Nice. You drop the auto turret behind the console, so it's not going to shoot him. Awesome. <laughs> and you're strafing <laughs> out. Oh, you strafed out behind your from out out from your cover to take your shot when it was his turn to shoot you. And then you strafe back in when he's not shooting. Yeah. Eh. And now you're dead. So now you run. At So this is another reset point where when you're on those stairs down here, mm -hmm. your teammate just showed up and he may kill your teammate, but he has also given you a chance to reset again, if you want to. Yeah. The priority in your mind here was killing him. That's valid. You can feel that that's your priority. I'm not going to say it's wrong. I'm just pointing out that that was also another spot where you could have reset and there was nothing mm -hmm. he could have done to stop you. Yeah. Other dude shows up. You have two teammates now. Uh... They, those they two v three you guys, but it's not like a a good two v three because you're at chip damage percentage. So, yeah. So he breathes in your direction. He shoots at Cayman and yeah, kills you. you know I mean? mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so that death, that whole situation was just there were there was a point where your opponent was able to reset. You didn't reset. You didn't take a second reset. And then, yeah. and then your opponent just like outplayed two of you. So, um, knowing when to disengage and mm -hmm. back up. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just uh, being aware of like when you can disengage and when you can't will help mm -hmm. you to in your decision making. It will become instinctual. It just will. So you've engaged. You're preparing a debt. You decide not to do the debt. Technically, this is a reset. This is a really small one. The second he goes behind this, it will take him a fraction of a second to react in or out. And yeah. if you think about their psychology of your opponent, or or if you put yourself in the in the mind of your opponent, what he's just seen you do is walk here, and then here, and then here. Okay? Which means you haven't left this spot. And so his instinct mm -hmm. is going to be to pop out to one of these sides and aim in this spot. And the second yeah. you see him, you can either predict it or time it to when he does it. But the second he you see his body, you can move your body so it's no longer in this spot, basically. And you will at least get mm -hmm. one free shot off. Yeah, okay. Being on this staircase is like, you're basically in no man's land. You got nothing. It's kind of like how we were talking on the bridges in the very beginning. Yeah, no cover or anything. So where's your cover? Mm, the small little lump, I guess, or the boxes to the right. You got this kind of if you can crouch down. And then you have those boxes that are like right here. Mm -hmm. So if this is your reset point, you can roll here to get a shot and then roll again to get behind the boxes. And then it doesn't matter what chip damage he's done on you. If you're behind heal the boxes, up. you can heal. And then you've already reset again. So basically, yeah, that's two. Oops. Mm -hmm. Especially since you have one shot left. Yeah, I probably wasn't paying attention to that. That's probably like an awareness thing on my end. Mm -hmm. I'm going to point out, you, you got your brain on a swivel here, right? You see the guy coming? Good. Why are you in the middle? Mm-hmm. No reason. Okay. The Other than maybe to throw a debt through the window. The a constant thing you can be asking yourself in game is why am I standing where I'm standing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you had wanted to stand throw a debt through the window, you could have been controlling the window by standing here. Yeah, yeah. Or Instead here of to control the door and the window. If you were deciding that, okay, I'm not going to get that close, then you should be behind one of these. Or over here. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the only place that gives them, the place that gives them the most options to deal with you is right here. Right in the middle. Yeah. And so you have limited your uh, choices and shrunk their their possible things they have to worry about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's easier for them to engage. It's easier to include... Why? Because I'm standing in the open and they can just peek and click on me. Instead of if I was playing mind cover, they'd have to kind of like... Especially if I was playing close to the door, they'd have to kind of go around the door and... Or if I was like playing behind the table, they'd have to aim specifically, very specific, or push in more. So it's a lot more complicated of, a, mm -hmm. of something that they'd have to do, right? Basically, yeah. basically, you've removed a lot of barriers to entry. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't have to think about like, uh, how do I engage because he's crouching behind this? Some of my shots aren't going to hit from this angle. I have to reposition. Oh, he's yeah. not standing here. Um, that means I have to position here to throw a debt this way. You've removed all of those possible scenarios for them to think about and, and presented them with one, basically. Mm -hmm. And your goal is to make it as annoying as possible for them to kill you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And here I am, just waiting. Just hanging out. Oh, now we're here. That was good. You reloaded behind cover, I like that. 
nicely done. Um, very small thing that mm -hmm. uh, is to. Do you notice that he's holding a debt? Nope. He is. Not in the slightest. So, go back a little bit further. You drop down and you're re reloading. He's holding a debt. Second, oh, yeah. Second he comes around the corner. You can see the little gray rectangle oh, in his hand. Gray. Yeah. Which means you get a free shot. Mm -hmm. You get a free shot and you get to roll because he's too far away. And you get the roll off, but you roll like you roll once the debt's like halfway. You know what I mean? So now he has time to shoot me. Yep. He has more time. Shoot. I rolled him right then. Yeah. More. And so he got the shot off. It didn't do anything, but he got the shot off. He could have. At the end of your roll, because he was able to track it the whole way. Mm -hmm. And so he, he got the full blast on, even if it didn't do anything, because it's a game of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets to the table. But if you had rolled um when the debt was here instead of here, um you would have had, you know, instead of instead of your body being in this area, it could have been in, you know, this area because you can strafe this amount of time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Techn yep. Technically you would have rolled to here and so you would have had this much area. But the point remains that you had a wider range mm -hmm. of spaces that you could have been in for him to shoot to have to cover with his shot yeah yeah in the end it worked out so we're fine we don't care anymore <laughs> but it's something to point out as um based on the reaction of how late your roll was i could tell that you didn't notice that he was throwing a debt basically yeah i think this game is easier to slow down than people think it is there's kind mm -hmm. of a uh a stigma against like playing defensively quote unquote in this game i've noticed from people um for sure yeah you know what i mean they're all fucking wrong <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just it's just blatantly incorrect uh yeah yeah and i'll give you a very simple explanation of why when you click on someone's body and their body is right here what percentage of the time do they die? 50. <laughs> the answer isn't 100%. <laughs> Less there, than 100. If the number is under 100% where all of your bullets hit their body and they don't die, it means that the game is janky as fuck. Okay? Yeah. What that means is you can do everything right and the game doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So going full balls deep and, and going for this <laughs> shot and you can do it all great and it doesn't and then you die <laughs> and, you, yeah, and, and yeah. then you're respawning. The game rewards you for getting more shots rather than good shots. Oh yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And so <laughs> people that like are blitzing around the map and and you know their their twitch aim is beautiful and it's like yeah you're gonna probably be at a higher level than most people because of those qualities but it's not because you're playing aggressive it's just that your mechanics getting, are better correct your decision making in a lot of these scenarios looks like you're trying to keep up with what you think the pace of the game should be you are not dictating the pace of the game for yourself. Yeah. There are so, especially as NG, there are so many times where you can just like, oh no, I'm losing the fight. I'm just going to go behind this wall <laughs> and there's nothing you can fucking do about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'm an engineer and I have health packs and he has to come all the way around into my shotgun if he wants to contest this or a debt. You know what I mean? Yeah. The game rewards you for being good at uh recognizing when you can reset when you can chill when you can push forward it does not reward you for w-ing in every time <laughs> and okay, lining up your I shot like perfectly <laughs> it doesn't work <laughs> unfortunately it doesn't work yeah yeah like you can you can play that way in like single player where there's no online latency 
and hit registration problems. And you're like, man, this feels great. I can just WW, you know, but it, it's unfortunately <laughs> not how it is. So if every shot is like pulling the slot machine, <laughs> mm-hmm. you are going to be rewarded for pulling the lever more often than you are from dealing with the stakes of, of the, the role. It's a good way to think about it. I hadn't really thought about it like that before. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I want to point out something. Mm -hmm. um, that's a general rule for a lot of people. Where are we at? Okay. So we're sprinting. Get closer now, right? So I want you to pay attention to your, your stamina bar. Gone. And now I'm walking up. I've noticed a lot of people use up their stamina bar to touch the flag. Which mm -hmm. is just backwards. Like it's it, the simplest way to say that. Because then everybody knows where you are, and you don't have the movement speed that you had. Right. It's like you're 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 using up all of your <laughs> maneuverability backwards. in the yeah exactly. Um, and everyone does this. I need to like make a PSA. Stop <laughs> using your stamina bar before you touch the objective that you need the stamina bar for. You know. Yeah. Stop using your stamina bar badly. We're all 2022. 